Welcome to my channel. This is an indication of some of the things that I cover on a regular basis in my videos. If you haven't already subscribed, please feel free to do so. And don't forget to click the little bell so that you'll get notified of future videos. Please feel free to share my videos on your social media. And I hope you enjoy the video which follows. Well, hello everybody. To start this video off, I'm going to give you a little look at my horse chestnut trees. Huge! This one came up first. That's the one that had the very long, strange looking root. If you uh, saw the last video where I planted these chestnuts after they'd been in the refrigerator for several months. And this one has just come up in the last 24 hours, hasn't opened up enough yet to show the leaves. And the third bag, which is out of view here, doesn't have anything up in it yet. But two out of three so far, and I, the other one I'm sure will come along too. And this is my cracky garden. I don't know, this is what, a week, ten days, I guess, after I did the last clip. This one was, was the largest lettuce to begin with, but it has really developed nicely. And now that this one here has roots down in the solution, it's coming right along too. The kale, I haven't tried any yet. Uh, lots of leaves, but they're not quite big enough. I mean, kale leaves, well, normally in a garden, kale leaves get very big. I don't know what's going to happen here. I'll give you a look at some of the roots here. It's amazing. I can't pull it out any further. I think it's gone over and attached to the roots of the lettuce plant as well. But they're no longer, the bottom of the pots are no longer down in the solution. It's, they've used up enough of the solution that that's not happening anymore. And I guess that's a good thing. Paul tells me that uh, the roots that are in the air are breathing for the plant. They're breathing, breathing in air. So if all of the roots were covered in water, I guess it wouldn't be good for the plant. This particular lettuce is not a large lettuce, but it's it's a loose head lettuce, not a leaf lettuce. You you cut the whole thing when it's when it's ready to eat. I think the seed packet said it makes enough for a couple of salads. Well, that depends on how big your salad is. I think it meant a couple of servings. So you know that's probably about twenty five percent of its size. That large one there. But impressed with it so far. It's doing quite well. Well, it's been another week or ten days since I did the last update here on the things that are growing under lights. I have more chestnuts ready to plant. I must do that today sometime, I guess. They've sprouted quite nicely in the refrigerator. I still don't have anything coming from the American slash Chinese chestnuts. I, they still look, you know, don't look that they're rotting or anything, so perhaps some of them will germinate eventually. You can see over here or not. This is one chestnut, but it sent up two plants. I only want a, a single stemmed tree. I wouldn't want a tree with two trunks, so I'll just clip one off. But they have leaved out nicely, these two. I've got the lights raised up. Normally the lights are down closer to them. Um, this one's much darker. I don't know what that's supposed to mean. They're in the same type of soil and getting watered at the same time and everything, but one of them's a darker green. This one was later coming up. Hasn't really opened up into leaves yet, but it's doing quite good. And now I'll show you what's going on over in the hydroponics, the cracky system. It's difficult to get back far enough to show you the whole, the whole thing here, but this lettuce plant in the middle, I'm very pleased with that. I'm still not harvesting it because when I do, I'm going to take the whole plant rather than just take off a few leaves. And this one here, I guess that's in focus too. That was the one that was very slow getting started because its roots didn't get down in the nutrients. Well, it's coming along nicely too. And I'm going to harvest quite a bit of the white Russian kale today. Actually, a lot of it. I'm going to just leave the smaller leaves. I'll be able to put the lights down lower. I ate one branch, leaf of it, whatever, just ate it raw the other day, and it cer certainly has lots of flavor. My iPhone in my pocket just dinged. I've got a message.
Oh. Quite a haircut on that, but that'll make a nice a nice amount for lunch today. I'll just chop it up a bit and uh, sweat it, saute it in a little bit of olive oil and I don't know, maybe some onion or something with it, but I will enjoy that. It's very tender, much more tender than it usually is when you get it out in the garden, but I, I think perhaps we also let the leaves grow larger out in the garden. So, Still lots of nutrient left down in there. Get the lights lowered back down. They will, you know, see the some, some roots on that one there. I guess it's down about halfway, maybe. And I do have part of a pail that I mixed uh, when I, I last time you saw the video. I, I added some so that the bottom of the net pots were were in the uh, nutrient just to get it started, so the roots would go down into the nutrient. I won't add that much again, but I, I think I will sort of top it up with what I have have left over there. Wouldn't hurt anything, I guess, although they're still looking quite healthy. I don't think they're lacking in nutrients any. Well, I have some other things that I want to show you that's growing here in the house that you've seen before, but I'll show you how they're progressing down in my lemon tree grove here. Sorry if the lighting is crazy here. It's very hard to film in this living room with that big glass door so much bright light behind it it's sort of overcast outdoor right now the sun seems to try to break out occasionally and we're having another snow flurry but uh, I can't control the light in here unless I film at night maybe that's the thing I should do I'm just going to give you a look at some of the things that uh, I grow in the house that have been growing in the house for several years. Some of them are doing quite well and some of them I almost lost earlier this winter. That's my bay laurel, uh, bay leaf tree or bush or plant, whatever you want to call it, when it gets fully grown, I guess. Tiny, tiny little rooted cutting when I got it from Richter's and I'm not sure how many years ago that was, but four or five years ago anyway. And it still is quite a small plant. I've never repotted it. I think this spring I will at least change the soil. I may even repot it into a larger pot, but I do use the bay leaves occasionally, so that's probably part of the reason why it doesn't grow too fast, but it's been doing quite well. At least it's alive and, and uh, thriving. And this is my rosemary plant. Rosemary is by far my favorite herb. I use it in a lot of different things. I, I love the aroma and I love the flavor. If you are interested in having a, a rosemary house plant if you live somewhere like where I live or it just will not overwinter even in my hoop house it would be dead as a doornail come spring so I've had this growing for a number of years I'm definitely going to repot it into a larger pot this spring before it starts putting on new growth again but all I did to get this started is if you see those uh, in the fresh herb department in grocery stores you see a little plastic container of spears of uh, of rosemary. I just bought those, put them in a glass of water, kept them on the windowsill for a few weeks, and they grew all kinds of roots, and that's where my plant came from. You can grow it from seed, but it's a much slower process, and those uh, cuttings in the grocery store will root quite easily. So if that interests you, there's a little information for you today. And this rather strange shot is my armorellus. It was a Christmas gift. And I think I planted it the day after Christmas. It was very slow getting started, but now it has two stalks and the blossom buds are just starting to, to break out. I think it's just supposed to be a plain red one, but if I can remember, I'll add a clip to the end of this when it's in full bloom before I upload the video. This is my rather spindly olive tree, which I've had also for a number of years. And it's putting on some nice new growth right now. Lots of nice new leaves coming on it in places. But when I zoom back, you'll see what I mean by spindly. For a number of years, two or three years, it got infected with scale. And, oh, I tried and tried and tried in the house. There was nothing. I, I, th I would think I had it under control, and boom, it would be back again. So last summer, I, th I never put these things outdoors, but that went outdoors on the deck where I could treat it almost daily. I used just insecticidal soap, but I sprayed that at least once a week, 
most of the summer, and I think I finally cured the scale problem. There has been none so far this winter, anyway, and it is starting to put on some more growth. Whoop, wrong way. But as you can see, there are a lot of branches that don't have a lot of leaves on. But it's alive and putting out new growth, so that's a good thing, I guess. Now for the sad story of my lemon trees. Uh, grown from seed, if you remember. Oh dear, I'd have to look back at videos, but I think maybe five years ago I started them from seed. This is a Meyer lemon, the one that has been affected the most dramatically. I have no idea what happened. It just started losing leaves in the fall, and it continued, and I thought, well, maybe it needs extra water, because I, I was letting them get quite dry. I watered them, and that didn't help. It lost more leaves. I gave them some nutrients. That didn't help. It lost more leaves, until this particular one lost everything. If I can zoom back, there isn't a, an original leaf left on it, but it has just decided to grow leaves in two or three locations, so I, I think maybe I have cured the problem. What I did, I, I said I've got nothing to lose, I'm going to lose the plant anyway. So what I did was knock them out of the plant pots, shake as much of the soil off the roots as I could, and repot them. This one continued and lost all of its leaves, but then it just started leaving out in a couple of places and all the way up that naked stem that you saw there are tiny little green things that are starting to come out so I think I've rescued the thing. My plan is in the spring to buy larger pots and repot them again. I think that must have been the problem. They had used up the nutrients in the soil and even feeding them with some liquid fertilizer wasn't helping. So they are coming around and I'll show you the other one now, which does look better. It lost a lot of leaves, and it's still losing some leaves, but it has still got a, a lot of the original leaves are still on the plant, and it's doing the same thing. It's now having new growth again. Now this one, I don't know the variety. It's just your garden variety generic uh, lemon that you buy in the grocery store. I bought one, had lots of seeds, and planted the fresh seeds, and got numerous seedlings out of it, and saved this one. Now, as what you're seeing there is a very tip top of it, and obviously there's all those new little leaves coming out, which is most encouraging. I know this one did have spider mites, and I'm assuming I brought the spider mites in on the uh, olive tree that had been outdoors all summer, all, even though I have never seen any on the olive tree. I don't know where else they would have come from, how they would have got in the house, because this, this plant was never outside. But I did a drastic treatment with insecticidal soap, and so far so good. That was months ago, and I haven't seen any new evidence of, of spider mites. But I will see if I can zoom back and show you what the rest of this thing looks like. Each one of the branches on it, the tips of the branches, are doing the same thing. They're growing new, new growth. And it lost a lot of leaves, but as you can see, it's still got quite a bit of its old foliage. And also, along the trunk, in places where it lost leaves, uh, there's little green buds starting to break out. So, fingers crossed, I think I might have saved both of my, my lemon trees. And as I said, plans are in the spring to buy a couple of very large pots and some good potting soil and repot them once again into, into larger pots. I, some Andy, I think, in in uh, in Australia, told me that seven years, I think, from seed before you would see them bloom. So I'm hoping to keep them alive for seven years. I'd like to see some kind of a small lemon develop on them. Well, that's the update here from the from the living room, anyway. And I'll try to remember to show you that amaryllis once it opens. Well, my seed orders are in, so I thought I would highlight a few of the things that I'm going to attempt to grow this year. Uh, the seeds that I'm going to talk about in this video are all from Annapolis Seeds in the Annapolis Valley of Nova Scotia. Their website is annapolisseeds.com, all one word, you know, the dot com thing there. 
what I like about them, I've always had good luck with any of their seeds that I've bought, and I've been buying seeds from them now for quite a few years, but they are non-GMO, organic, open-pollinated heirloom varieties, and they have been tried and tested for this maritime climate that I live in. So I, generally speaking, have pretty good luck with them. The first one here is a, a pepper, a bell pepper type. It's starch green, and as you can see, turns red when it ripens. The variety is called King of the North, and their description says, one of the earliest bell peppers, well adapted for the maritimes, the large blocky fruit start out dark green and ripen to red, reliable heavy yields in cool climates. Well, I hope they're all correct. I don't have a great deal of luck in growing peppers, and large bell peppers in particular. I do grow them inside of the hoop house, which should make it a little bit warmer for them anyway, and they, they do produce for me, but uh, I've always grown the small varieties in the past because any attempt at growing the larger ones has never been terribly successful, but that's what I'm going to give it a, a try this summer anyway, is with this variety which is supposed to be good for cool climates. I'm really starting my seeds late this year. Like I, when I grow peppers in the past, I have started peppers on New Year's Day. I had such bad luck last year with our cold spring. I'm going to be content with starting them late, and uh, hopefully they will produce for me in the fall or whatever, even in the hoopos. They may not produce that early, but I'm going to start. I plan to start my peppers on the 1st of April and tomatoes I will start the 15th of, of April. The only thing I'm going to start earlier are geraniums, or the annual geranium, Pelagonium actually, not actually a, a geranium. But I like those, they're a very hardy garden flower. I take a lot of punishment. If you forget to water them, they're fine with that. So that's, those will be started first in the 1st of March, but peppers won't be started until the 1st of April. This first tomato variety here is called Cole, C-O-L-E, and it intrigues me because it is supposed to be the earliest tomato. They say it's our earliest tomato. It's been grown and selected for at least 40 years by a Mennonite family in Saskatchewan. It came to me from seed savers in northern Alberta, where it is one of only a few varieties that can be reliably counted on to mature. The short, compact plants seem to be more fruit than foliage, a very good producer of tasty, small, medium-sized red fruit. Well, after reading that, how could you not order it? <laughs> short season we certainly have here. I can extend the season a bit with the hoopos, but it is a very short growing season here, especially for anything that likes a hot climate like tomatoes do. So, The description of this thing really intrigues me. I hope it does as well it is, as it is billed to, to do. We'll know, I guess, later on this summer. And I will be planting these seeds to start growing my seedlings in uh, mid-April. Uh, we have a community garden starting here at the Campobello Lodge nursing home. It's a 30-bed nursing home, and out in front of the nursing home was a large green area. A group of people, I'm not involved with the group, but a group of people have uh, got a grant, and they've already put in some of the beds, so I have offered to supply them with some tomato plants. So hopefully I'll get enough of these germinated that I'll be able to share them at the new community garden. Whenever I order from Annapolis Seeds, there's always a little note attached to your receipt when it arrives from Owen, the owner, and he always includes a packet of seeds free. I don't know if there's any particular size to your order before they do that or not. My orders are never that large. Everything I'm showing you here today is, is, is this year's order. But anyway, Wenzel Tomato is what we're looking at. and That was a free sample that came with my order. I checked in their catalog and it says it's a large red-pink beefsteak 
type tomato, dense, meaty, and awesome for sandwiches. True Nova Scotia heirloom, grown for generations by the Wenzel family, the original homesteaders of the land that is now the Wind Horse Farm in Lunenburg County. It's a potato leaf which grows up to four foot tall, potato leaf variety. I hesitate to grow them. I am indeterminate, as I say, don't produce for me until the fall sometime. But I love a large beefsteak type tomato, so I've, I've got to give it a try. I won't grow a great deal of them, maybe just a couple of plants. I've already given some of the seeds away. Um, I don't want to put a lot of space in, in the hoopos with them, but hopefully I'll get a few off of a couple of plants. I've grown before a large yellow beefsteak type tomato, an Amish, I think it was an Amish tomato, or Mennonite, one or the other. Anyway, the best tasting thing I've ever eaten. So I am looking forward to giving these a try and hopefully getting a few ripe ones out of them in the fall. Being a vegetarian, I, of course, like a lot of different kinds of vegetables, but I think my favorite vegetables are always winter squash. I, I'm always trying a new variety. Uh, some of the old standards that I've grown for years I love very much, but I, I just can't stop from trying new varieties. So I've got two new ones in my order from Annapolis this year. This one is called Baby Blue Hubbard Squash. Uh, their write-up says a small, personal-sized version of the classic Blue Hubbard among the finest textured of any winter squash I've tried, the deep orange flesh is perfect for roasting and baking, an excellent keeper, productive and sprawling vines. Yes, I'm well aware of that. Most of these uh, heirloom type winter squash uh, take over an acreage with their vines, but that's okay. I've got space where they can grow. I love Hubbard squash, the problem here being the short season again with the large varieties of Hubbard squash and some of these things can go up to 20 pounds or more. Uh, I just don't have season enough for them to grow and ripen. So I'm anxious to try this one. It's a small squash. It doesn't give any weight, but I would say a pound or two is about the size what they look like anyway. And if it performs anything like the large blue Hubbards do, when they say it's an excellent keeper, they certainly mean that. Uh, they will store for an awful long time before they start to get a few rotten spots on them or whatever. So really looking forward to giving the Blue Hubbard a try. And last but not least in my Annapolis seeds order is this squash, another winter squash called the Lower Salmon River Squash. And their write-up says, one of the most delicious winter squash to be had. It's, think, ew, it's thick orange flesh is perfect for roasting or for pies. Sweet and fine textured. Excellent keeper, too. A rare heirloom originally from the Salmon River Valley in Idaho. They have proven well adapted for life in the Maritimes. This beautiful squash comes to us from our friends at Pembroke Farm of the eastern Prince Edward Island. They have been growing and selecting this variety for a number of seasons now. So I am really looking forward to trying it. It's a nice looking little squash. Doesn't really say what the size of it is supposed to be other than it is growing well in the Maritimes. So I have hopes of getting a few of them to whatever their full size is and ripening them. It also says it's an excellent keeper, so that's another good a good feature. I Different squashes that I've grown in the past, they start to mold or whatever very quickly, so I cook them and freeze them and, uh, you know, thaw them back up to, to eat the cooked squash. And I, yeah, it's okay, but it's not as good as this. If, if it was a good keeper and you uh, can just cut it up and cook it fresh and eat it any time. It always has much better flavor that way. Well, that includes my orders from Annapolis. 
perhaps in a future gardening video here this spring I'll highlight a few of the things that I've got in from Bessie Seeds. There's nothing very exotic in either one of my orders. I'm not going out with any of the out on a limb with any of the strange things that I've tried in the past here, some of which I liked and some of which I didn't. Just more the tried and true and, well, some vegetables that I haven't grown in a while, but I'm going to try them again, so I will probably show you some of those things later on. Well, time is moving right along. The first thing I'm going to be planting, first seeds I'm going to sow anyway, are these Maverick Mixed Geraniums. They need at least 12 weeks before you put them out in the garden. So this is the 2nd of March, and I won't be putting them out till sometime in the first or second week of June, so I should give them time to get a good start, I guess. I've grown them once before, or maybe a couple of times before. The interesting thing is they have to start in total darkness, so I always have to figure out a way of, <laughs> even though they're growing under lights, of making sure that they're in the dark. I put a box over them or something, and they need bottom heat, uh, so I'll be putting them on the heat mat, the propagating mat, because the, the instructions say that they definitely need bottom heat. And I was just looking at the back of the seed packet here, the germination can occur any time between 3 and 15 days. Well, the time will tell on that one, I guess, but let's get busy and get them at least in the ground. Well, my hydroponic setup has lost its spot on the propagating mat. This is the tray that I hope to get my geranium started in. That's just a commercially bought seed starting mix. It's looking kind of wet right now, but it's mostly peat moss. And I've actually put water on it twice and the top starts drying out again. I didn't want it to be too dry, I didn't want it to be too wet, but I, I think the uh, mixture will absorb the rest of the water quite quickly. I always wanted one of these little gizmos. It's the first time I've ever had one. It has different settings for different seed sizes. <laughs> and I just threw three seeds out at once. So much for that idea. I bought two packets of these seeds. Uh, I don't know how much I paid for them now, but... You only get about ten seeds to a packet. So I'm going to have to redistribute them. I'm not terribly impressed with my little seed spreader here. At least they're a bright yellow color. They show up, don't get lost in the color of the soil. Well, this can't be terribly interesting. I'll bring you back in just a minute after I've got them all positioned where I want them. Well, I think I counted correctly, and I have 21 seeds, so I got one bonus, I guess. Just going to cover them lightly, pinch that soil back over the top of them. But the instructions do say to firm them in. They're such tiny seeds, you don't want them buried too deeply. Now, my plan for putting them in the dark is to cover them with a black plastic garbage bag folded 
And well, I think the way I got it folded, there would be four thicknesses there. And that should definitely be dark. And then they're still on top of the, the propagating mat, so that will provide them with the heat that they need. And the black plastic will hold the heat in. It's anywhere from 3 to 15 days, so I won't bother to check until at least 3 or 4 days from now just to see if anything has started to come up. But there are my Maverick Mixed Geraniums sewn. Now I'll give you a look at what's going on with my horse chestnuts here. Well, there are the three originals, three that I started with whenever that was, five or six weeks ago when I planted those, and they're doing quite well. I just planted four more that had sprouted. There are four more that I haven't planted, and they've all sprouted, but I don't know what I'd do with more than seven um, red flowering horse chestnut trees. So I've just left those ones down in the basement where it's cool. If they survive till spring, maybe I'll just plant them outside in the spring. I've got four more here that had lovely long shoots on them, so I'm sure they will pop up soon. And I've just checked again, I think it was yesterday that I checked the American chestnuts that came from China. No sign of any sprouts on them yet, but I'm just leaving them in the refrigerator in the damp soil, the same as these ones were. So if anything's going to happen, eventually it will, I guess. I'd have to have some space to plant those because I would like to have as many of those that grow, but so far none of them are growing. Well, it's been three days now since I planted the geranium seeds. They've been under black plastic on the propagating mat. The packet said germination in three to fifteen days. I'll have to elevate you a little more. I can't quite see that. And that is amazing. <laughs> I don't know why they say 3 to 15 days. I don't know what's going to happen in 15 days' time. There were 21 seeds. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I see 15 up so far. I'm not sure if I counted that one out. There's 15 or 16 up. I think I'm going to take them off of the take the plastic off of them. I don't want them to become long and lanky, and they're a long ways below these lights because of the uh, hydroponic setup with the lettuce and kale. So I'm going to put a box or something on them to get them up closer to the light, and hopefully the others that aren't up yet will come up. Yeah, there's another one there. They're they're all coming anyway. And, you know, anyway, I guess that isn't one, but that's already a good germination rate, and I'm sure the others will probably come along. But like I, like I said, I just don't want them to get to long, lanky plants before I get a chance to transplant them into larger pots. So that is good success, in my opinion, anyway. Well, I used two boxes, a large one and a smaller one, to get them elevated up under the the lights and I did a recount I now see 18 um, so that's really good out of 21 there's only three more to, to go to get a hundred percent well I said I would try to show a clip of the armorellis in bloom before this video is over and right now there's one that's fully out a second one that's probably will be fully out tomorrow and six more that are coming along behind it, but I can't wait any longer. <laughs> this video now is over a half hour in length, and that'll take me more than a day and a half to upload with my internet connection. So this will have to do for the armorellas in this video anyway. Next time I do an update, I will try to remember to show a clip of all eight blossoms out, if that should actually occur before one dies and drops off. They don't last very long, each blossom, but they're sort of worth waiting for this time of year. A beautiful shot of color. Especially after yesterday, we had 
30 to 40 centimeters of snow yesterday and I'm buried here. Well, thank you very much for watching.